I suppose that's the initial move that I look back and think, oh, was that the wisest move in the world? You know, did I let ambition and, and that get the better of me at, at that stage? But yeah, I suppose because of the whole licensing kind of thing, my, my title from, from day one on a, on a contract would have been team manager. Um, because I suppose because it had to be. Um, so yeah, look, there was there was the the public title and there was the you know the real title and there was uh, there was a lot of title a lot of titles going on, Nathan. Mm. So there was, but at the same time, I was kind of happy enough to do whatever the, the the club kind of required me to do within reason, within reason. But right. it was only leading up to the start of the season that the the within reason changed. You know, because there were obviously uh, in League of Ireland circles, uh, word travels fast, and there's a lot of rumours, and there's question marks about the people behind the scenes who were leaving and uh, what role you were having to fill in. I guess in a way because of the structure of Irish football and like even with a pro license it's very difficult for people to get jobs that when an opportunity comes up to get another skill set within a club that you can probably use into the future that while some may see it as a, a step down to be doing those office roles actually in terms of your long term future it was probably a decent bit of experience yeah and look I suppose to be honest with you I was just trying to do what the club needed done mm. um, at that time I wouldn't be overly precious about you know what I've been asked to do or what title has been put on me if there's something needs doing and and I think I might be capable of doing it well then I'll, I'll, I'll do it you know that doesn't really bother me in the slightest um, so it doesn't so no I was, I was and as you say yeah it does increase your it does increase your skill set you know I, I am now able to do things um, football wise and even things that probably stand to me in in, in my own kind of business side of things um, I am able to do things that I certainly wasn't able to do at the beginning of January that's for sure and I, I would look back on that as a positive as well you know to go against that you could say that Dundalk are a club who just played in the Europa League who have been champions on a regular basis over the last half decade that it would be a sign that if people are leaving behind the scenes and, and not being replaced straight away of a club not being run in a well manner. Um, yeah, look, I think it was, you know, there was maybe a little bit of, of you know, having to fill gaps and, mm. and, and, you know, a little bit all over the place at times. Now, to be fair, there, there have been people who come into roles since then. Um, so they have. So there was a little bit of clamoring around, as I say, just to, to, to fill gaps. Now, you know, there's probably clamoring around maybe for two months or that. But there are at least more more hands on deck there now at the moment than there were during that initial period that it was it was very helter, helter skelter. You know, you had a transfer deadline coming up as well um, and all of that kind of stuff. So, look, it was a bit crazy for a while. But as I say, there was a, there is, there's probably a little bit more structure to it there now at the minute. All right. What was your involvement then on the football side? pre-season um with pre-season I, I was absolutely flat to the mat in in the office um to be honest so you weren't on the training I, ground at all well the training ground was right beside the office mm. so it's easy to go up and get a look but no i wasn't i'll be honest with you no no i wasn't really participating in it in it just purely because i couldn't couldn't get out the door of, of the office there was just enough to, to to be done in there um so it was probably the week leading into the was it the first game of the season, first league game of the season, or, or maybe leading into the President's Cup game, um, that things started to level out a little bit more and I managed to to, to get out on, onto the pitch at that stage. But to be fair, Nathan, I mean, I was never I was never massively involved on the pitch anyway, so mm. it wasn't like I was a, a missed presence from the pitch or anything, you know? What was your relationship like with Filippo Giovanioli? Yeah, well, there's, I suppose there's two kinds of relationships. There's the personal relationship and then there's the, the professional relationship. And he's um, he's a charismatic guy. He's a, he's a, he's a fun guy to be around, a uh, very, very bubbly guy, um, loads of personality, to be fair to him. And so from that side of things, on a personal level, it's, it's impossible not to get on with him. Um, he was a guy you could could have good old crack with and and, and good conversations. There was a, there was a, bit of a bit of an edge to him, a bit of boldness about him, which I liked, you know. Um, and and look, if 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 I suppose if I could have stayed in the role where I was only ever the opposition analyst, well then you know your place, and it's 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 not your it's 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 you just you just back up the manager one hundred percent of the time, and it's not your place to question if you think if you think you would do things differently, you just shut your mouth. It's not it's not your uh, it's not your place to say it. Um, but when the dynamic changed this season, um, then it becomes more awkward because. Look, I think any you know any two people are going to have very very different ideals as to how things should be done, um, and as I say, in the normal circumstances, you know the manager is top dog, and therefore you just suck it up. 
and the, the reality is again he was top dog and I did just have to suck it up but you know that dynamic is very very different than when you're the one walking out in front of the the media and trying to justify tactics or substitutions or training schedules or anything like that that you actually had little to no say in so it it, it makes it a difficult relationship then in, in that sense you know so did you feel so last season in the Europa League while you were sort of front and centre there was an understanding that it was a sort of ticking the box exercise because you had the qualification he didn't that there was that awkward press conference a few months back where there was all sorts of confusion as to they were trying to dig down into what your title as manager meant would you be picking the team is that did that cause confusion for you as much as it did for him um i wouldn't say it caused confusion no look it was uh you know it's hard to go into it there are probably things that you'd you'd like to say that i suppose contractually or whatever you want to look at that that you can't really say look it was a it was a position that i found myself in you know i can I do look back at it and kind of think, right, could I have handled it differently? Could I have seen coming the position I was going to be put in? Could I have dealt with that differently? But I found myself in a, in a position that I wasn't happy with. Um, but it's very, very, you know, there was an element of me probably, Nathan, more than an element. There was a large part of me probably that wanted to to, to walk away as soon as, as, as that line um, was put out there. But it was not my Which line? Income. That you were team manager? Yeah, yeah. Well, certainly that I was picking the team. Right. Um, but it's 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 your full time it's your full time employment. It's your full time gig. You 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 challenge any person to up and walk away from their full time gig in the middle of a pandemic. Um, in this country, in where, football, where there ain't many uh, full time gigs going. You don't. You don't. And, and look, I, I you know as I say, I, look, I have a, a strong enough business and 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 sales and marketing background. You know, but you're so I would you know I've. I've there's plenty of opportunities maybe outside of football and I don't mind working outside of football as well but just opportunities full stop are, are, are so slim and far between at the moment that um, look I had to weigh up I had to weigh up where, where I stood and I suppose in the back of my head I was hoping things might play out a little bit better even though in my heart and hearts I knew it just it just wasn't doable it just really wasn't workable um, but look I, I got on with it I, I got on with it and I tried to do I did, tried to do everything that the club needed me to do to the best of my ability um, while I was there I, you know I did the opposition analysis to the best of my ability I, I did the, the media duties front and centre to the, to the absolute best of my ability I never ever ever questioned Filippo publicly or privately to the players um, you know that's all I could do and but look let's be honest in the meantime you're looking around and you're 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 thinking right you know it's it's possibly time to to see what else is out there for you and 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 to to, to maybe get out of a, a situation that you're uncomfortable with and it, it probably took me a couple of weeks longer than I, I would have hoped to do that but uh yeah that's that's what happened in the end I suppose so so was that press conference the first time you heard you were going to be you well you knew you were team manager but the first you heard that you were going to be picking the team publicly um it, it would have been it wouldn't have been too far ahead of that yeah right. that's yeah and was it news to filippo as well <laughs> um that that's Filippo, that one but pro uh, possibly to a certain element yeah yeah possibly yeah i'm not sure maybe he was a bit more yeah ahead of the, and was there, the was there no else. way of negotiating with jim magilton with bill holtzizer of well, if you're putting this out there and I am going to be the one facing the media, you have now told them that I am responsible for picking this team, that actually I'm a vastly experienced coach, I have my pro licence, I should have a role. I should have more of a role than opposition analyst. I should be fully involved in this coaching team with a voice around team selection. Or was that just simply not an option? I suppose there's two things I'd say on that one, Nathan. The first point, and I think the most important point to make on that is like, I shouldn't be the Dundalk manager. I never wanted to be the Dundalk manager. I never expected to be the Dundalk manager. I'm not qualified to be the Dundalk manager. Just because I have a pro license doesn't mean I should be the Dundalk manager. I have nowhere near... Dundalk are, are, are still, to my mind, pretty much the biggest club in this entire country. I mean, somebody with a CV like mine doesn't shouldn't be weighing an ass's roar of getting the Dundalk manager's job. Like, absolutely not. Um, like, they should be going for the absolute best of the best that's possibly out there now that they're in a position to find a new manager and I assume that's what they will do so 
for you know that that has to be taken into account first there's no way that i i don't have the cv to have been the lock manager do i do i back myself as a manager and am i you know do i want to get back in at that level and, and prove myself again maybe in the manner that i did at wexford 100 percent, 100 percent. i've i've had a few ups and a few downs over the last six seven eight years in it but i 100 percent still have complete and utter belief in myself but that but i don't have the cv to have been done to, to to warrant being done dock manager so from that point of view you know you're not going to go beating banging down the door saying here why aren't i with med the manager um but on the flip side yeah i did certainly push the case that well hold on now there needs to be a bit more uh you know, if I if my name's if my name's going to be the one front and centre, I'm, I'm going to need to have a bit more involvement than I would normally expect to have. Um, and you know, there was a discussion around that, but look, it, it didn't transpire that way. Again, to be fair to Filippo, I would say he's he's got a he's got a he's got a tremendous level of of belief in himself, a tremendous level of of self confidence, and he wants to do things a certain way and. By, you know, there's there's nobody gonna there's nobody gonna change his mind on that. Um, and as I said, that that is a trait to, to be admired to a certain extent within him. But obviously, it's a very frustrating trait then from my point of view um, that he's you know he is so steadfast to to his own beliefs, which as I say, he is he is entitled to be. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it makes it it makes it it makes it quite quite difficult. You know. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I think you've been very honest there about you know your role and and where you could have been in Irish football but you know Dundalk supporters people outside of Dundalk would look and say well Filippo Giovanioli didn't have the CV to be Dundalk manager yes got the job uh, as well do you think his inexperience at manager level made it more difficult to have those sort of conversations because I think back to I know it's a different scenario completely when John Gill and Vinnie Perth were there and Vinnie Perth was obviously doing the pro license at the time and he'd been at Dundalk for many years and John Gill was very experienced. It never seemed as though these sort of issues ever cropped up. Yeah, yeah. Look, um, I look. I suppose, again, first thing you'd say is if Philippe was offered a job, you can't blame him for, for, <laughs> for taking the job. Um, so you can't, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, look, of course, you know, there, there were a lot of things that would have worked against Filippo that aren't necessarily things he could have done a whole lot about you know that he is obviously I think by his own admission it's the first adult team that he's he's ever managed um he also obviously is coming into a league that that he knows very little about so he's he's probably relying on on me I don't know how that reflects on, on my, my opposition analysis but I suppose he's relying on on other people for for information so it, it's you know it's very very tough um for him to try and do the job to the to the standard that's required, as I say, for a club the size of it, um, and with the expectations around it, that was going to be very very difficult. Um, and yeah, look, I suppose we're just, you know, he he probably would have made the point to me, you know, very early that he has a very very clear philosophy, and if 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 I'm not able to if I'm not able to fall in line with his philosophy, then it's going to be difficult to work, and no matter how much I, you know, you can't. You can't force yourself, unfortunately, to to believe in a certain way of doing things. And you know, he had a way of doing things, and my natural way of doing things would have been very, very different, I suppose, to his natural way of doing things. So again, that that creates problems and issues for you know naturally enough. Mm. His uh, style of management, and there were times, you know, where there seemed to be a lot of changes to the team week after week. There were changes to the goalkeeper. There were uh, a lot of substitutions taking place at the one time. It seemed quite often he was behind you in the stand, and things were happening, and you weren't quite sure. Uh, was that just his style, or was that a bit of inexperience? Um, yeah, I, look, it probably is. Again, it's a, it's a, it's maybe a bit of inexperience. It's maybe. You know, when things are going against you, you you, you maybe press the, the the panic button. I know, you know, I would have been very very conscious of to try and you know when, when managing teams to maybe say to those around me, pull pull me back here when I when I look like I'm I've, I've hit the hit the red button and the mist has descended and I'm not quite see, seeing clearly. You know, pull me back and and you know maybe he, you know there could have been a little bit a little bit more of that. But yeah, the, look, the inexperience, of course, it, it you know it would be difficult to. It would have counted against him maybe a little bit, so it would. But look, at the same time, you know, he, it's not like he, he he did an awful job. Far from it. And and as I say, I'm look, I'm his opposition analyst. I'm I'm you know I'm feeding into it no matter no matter what I say. I am part of all that as well. So there's no point to you know I can't wash my hands of it either. At the same time, nor am I looking for sympathy for the position that I found myself in. I'm the person who put myself into that position, so I am. 
you mentioned your role, say, uh, in the office job part of it, and you were dealing with trying to bring players into the club, and there was visas. I, it, there was a big turnover of players in the off season for Dundalk, and a lot of the established players who had a huge amount of league titles between them left the club too. Dundalk's great rival when you have the likes of Sean Gannon and Sean Hoare ending up at Shamrock Rovers uh, doesn't look good ever and there's obviously different contractual situations of what Shamrock Rovers are offering to Dundalk and then you have a lot of players coming in from different leagues all trying to settle at the same time uh, how difficult was that uh, to be a part of and to see those players who've been so successful leave and then try and juggle these mix of players and bring them all in Ah, yeah, well, that that definitely would have been a, a particular frustration of mine. That's that's for sure. Um, ah, look, it, it's just it's it's it, it it's it really is crazy the, the the players that have been allowed to leave the club. Um, now don't get me wrong, there's still there are still some phenomenal players there, and you know you talk about whether they can pull this all back around. They definitely can because you know when you're the likes of your your Patrick McLennies and your Chris Shields and your Michael Duffy's Andy Boyle, like there's there's phenomenal players there, but I just I don't think there was such a need to throw the baby the the, the what is it the water out, the baby uh, out of the, the tub. Water. Yeah, that's the one I'm looking for. Yeah, that was a poor attempt by me now to clear to get that one. Um, yeah, there's there, there was no there was no need to overreact. There really really wasn't. Okay, they hadn't performed to the level that they were capable of the the previous season. There was various different reasons for that. But I mean, like. You know, I challenge anybody to tell me that that Sean Orr isn't isn't up there in in the very very best centre halves around. He's he's an absolute class act. So he is. Um, and the same can the same look can be applied to 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 Gano and and to so many of of the players that were unfortunately allowed to 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 get away from the club. And I would have found that particularly frustrating. Because you, you you do you lose your identity, Nathan. So you have to lose your identity to a certain extent. And I'm not. I think sometimes maybe there was a perception within the club that I was anti foreigner and I wasn't I absolutely wasn't anti-foreigner and a couple of the, the, the signings that they've made are good lads and their you know their attitudes are excellent and with a bit of time I think they might acclimatise to the league I just thought losing the, the heart and 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 not the heart because you still have Shields and, and those kinds of boys but you know losing that Irishness out of the side I mean a guy like a guy like, like John Mountaney for example like what what you see what you see on for 90 minutes on Friday night out of John Mountaney is about 20% of what John Mountaney contributes to, to Dundalk. He was a phenomenal uh, pr- presence around that dressing room. Uh, he's, you know, when you talk about 100 percenters, there's a guy who was, you know, absolute 100 percenter. You never got anything less than maximum from him. Um, and I would have you know, try to fight a guy like that's corner two to nail to try and explain, do you understand how much of a loss his presence, like he wasn't a guy who started every week and I suppose mm. that's why I'm saying there's more to him than just what you saw in those 90 minutes and losing guys out of a dressing room like that, it's, it, you know, it's a, it's, it's more, it's a bigger loss than just 90 minutes on a football pitch. There was obviously the situation with the goalkeepers leaving the club as well. There was a, a, a mix there that a huge amount of experience was lost and you say it probably ripping the heart out of the club uh, in one way. It, it, We've seen uh, in England uh, the backlash against American owners and maybe there seemed to be a lack of understanding. Like There was obviously all sorts of rumours, which I know Vinnie Perth would deny, around influence when he was in charge. It, it, the people who are running the club, do you think they have a full understanding now of, of how Irish football works? Yeah, yeah, they, they, probably, they probably do now anyway, that's for sure. <laughs> um, but... Look again. It's a strange one, Nathan. Like I'd have to say that personally, personally, I I had a very good relationship with Bill. Um, I I found him. When I say that, I mean in that I found, he he was very straight in any of his dealings with me, any any of the promises he made to me, or any of the agreements we had, or anything like that. He was also the kind of guy who you could have a disagreement with, you could have an argument with, and, you know, there's no grudges held 10 minutes later. He, you know, he, 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 he treats you exactly like he did before you had the disagreement. And so there are elements of Bill that, 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 you know, have, he, he's a good guy underneath it all. He is, he is a good guy. Um, he probably just needed a little bit more, you know, needed to take a little bit more information on, on board from those who would know Irish football inside out. Um, as probably the, the best way to put it, you know? Mm. I presume the players were aware of this friction in the background. 
I'd hope not. I'd hope not because then I'm not doing my job correctly. Um, you know, you, you no matter. So is your job what, correctly to smile and get on with it and do everything behind closed doors? So if you're on the training definitely. ground, you're around the training ground. You just have to have a smile on your yeah. face and looking the, looking forward well, to the think, weekend, lads. Well, I think my job is definitely not to cast doubt on on the manager's ability around players. That's for sure. Um, you know, if I put myself in Filippo's shoes. Um, you know, and I found out that anybody, you know, in my staff was openly uh, been negative around players around me. Well, then obviously you're 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 not going to be very happy with them, and you're 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 going to be getting them out there ASAP, and and rightly so. Um, so look again, maybe some people would say that's me not being strong enough. I don't know. People, you know, you can have different people who take different angles on it. You know, I'm sure mm-hmm. there are some people who would say that I needed to be needed to be stronger on it. But um, no, I would definitely like to think that I I would think the players were reasonably surprised um when i resigned i would think they were reasonably surprised when i resigned and look i did you know i suppose two sides of it uh, one bit i probably never touched on in terms of the difficulty around the whole thing was you know when it was announced and and when it was put out there that 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 i was the manager like oh geez and nathan the, the, tw- the following 24 hours I've never felt like such a fraud in my life. Like my phone was hopping. Like it was like close to a hundred text messages coming in from people who wouldn't maybe be fully up to date with League of Ireland. I mean, people around my own locality. Yeah. Leash isn't exactly a hotbed for the League of Ireland, you know. And um, you know, they're all texting you congratulations and texting you really, really nice messages and all of that kind of thing. And she can't text them back and explain it to them, because, <laughs> and you can't say thanks because then you're playing along with. <laughs> With the, with the perception so you're just kind of leaving the messages hanging there and you're not really replying to people and that was you know that that was not a nice feeling uh, over that kind of period of time but the, i suppose the reason i bring that that up in this context is on the flip side over the weekend after i resigned you know you did feel a hell of a lot better about yourself and you did feel like you could you know you could kind of reasonably hold your head high when you've got you know, when you've got Patrick McElhenney ringing you, Michael Duffy ringing you, guys like that ringing you, thanking you for your your, your contribution, nearly more important when you've got people in the office, um, an awful lot of people in the office, right from, from kind of front office to accounts to, to to marketing, to the various different roles, kind of, you know, ringing you and texting you, saying, um, look, Shane, you know, we knew what was going on and, and, and fair play for, for what you did put into the club. Mm. More so, be, being honest, more so off the field than on it, Nathan. Um, you know, you kind of think, okay, well, you know, people seem to think that I, I did make a worthwhile contribution around here, but um, yeah. Yeah, and look, that's here. That's uh, something to take out of it, something really positive to take out of it as well. And it is a small industry, so you need to make sure you make those connections and leave them in a positive way. Did Did you know, did you have a sense that Filippo, Filippo was also going to be leaving? No, no, no. Right. Um, <laughs> and obviously, you know, you'd wonder, you know, how 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 pivotal a cog was me going and him going, would he still be there if I was still there? And, you know, or what had decisions been made around him? Other, anyway, I don't know. Um, I don't know, really, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, look, it's, 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 it's that, that's not really for me to speculate on, really, to be honest with you. So it's not I made my own decision based on on my position. Um, so I didn't. That was all I could do. I, I probably was a bit surprised when I, when, I, when I saw what happened with him then very quickly afterwards. Do you regret going in with Dundalk absolutely not not in a million years no um, last year was an incredible experience um, absolutely incredible experience as I say when, when most of the rest of the population were having zero experiences I was having one of the experiences <laughs> of my life um, some of the people that I encountered in the club I mean that's you know it's very very easy to see why they had the success that they've had in the past Nathan you know there's I know Gary is, is gone from it there now as well but the likes of Gary Rogers Brian Garton I mean what a guy um you know, Shieldsy, uh, Fats, Michael Duffy, there, there's there's incredible people. And even the people before that, you know, with, with Finney and, 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 and Giller and, and people like that. So, and, and by the way, they also had the best medical department in the country. There's there's some fantastic people involved there. And I suppose being selfish above all else, Nathan, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of concentrating on the small ball now for the next few months, but but there is there is a, a want to eventually end up back potentially in, in, in League of Ireland management. And I genuinely, genuinely believe if I went back in League of Ireland management, and as I say, that's possibly at 
middle to bottom half of the first division look I've done it once I'd do it again if I had to and, and try and build it from there but when I go back if and when I go back into League of Ireland management I go back in a better manager for the experiences that I've had um, just watching how players carry themselves you know those big name players watching how you know obviously watching being in around training sessions being around a, a setup like that you're going to be learning you're going to be learning all the time um and i think it's 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 equipped me a hell of a lot better for for if or when the next gig potentially comes up you know it does show a big issue though for managers coaches within irish football and we've touched on this and we keep threatening to do a longer piece on the pro license and how few people there are in this country who have the pro license particularly people who weren't professional players who didn't come through from the international team and actually then how few jobs there are for people who hold such a high qualification such a difficult qualification to get that in a way you have to sort of suffer through the last few months because as you say it's your full-time job it's not like being in the premier league where a manager would probably throw their toys out of the pram and say i'm done with this and you'll get another job somewhere quite quickly down the line if you're in that circle. In Ireland, if you're a pro license holder, like there's no guarantees that you get another job in the League of Ireland. There's no guarantees you get a full-time paying job anywhere right now. Yeah, we look. We just have no industry here. I suppose that's probably the best way of putting it. And and to be fair, Nathan, like there was there, there were people who there were people who had a kind of a, a, a swipe kind of indirectly at, at, at me for, for taking on the role and therefore, you know, allowing Dundalk to tick the box that allowed Filippo to do the job even though he wasn't a, a pro license holder. And I get that. I, I completely get that. Um, but on the, on the flip side, like I started my coaching badges when I was 19 and by 28 I had my pro license. I can tell you no club, not one club ever paid for one of single one of my registrations or one sing one of my 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 licenses. I I I paid for every single one of them all the way up. It it cost me probably twelve grand over the course of those ten years. You kind of feel within your right to put yourself in a position where you're you're able to make a bit of a living for yourself mm. on the back of that, even if it's not quite what it says on the tin. Um, but I do get I do get the gripe at the same time because it's 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 so hard to get to that level. Um, you just. You know, you really wish you had your industry of whatever it is, four to four divisions of, you know, professional ranging from professional to semi-professional clubs where you've got managers, assistant managers, and coaches. You know, if you've got, if you've got forty clubs operating in your country and, and tr three kind of fully paid gigs at all of them, now you've got you've got a proper industry going there. But look, we're a million million miles away from that, unfortunately. Uh, all our football coverage here on Off the Ball is with thanks to Paddy Power for information and responsible gambling. Visit gamblingcare.ie. Shane Keegan uh, is with us. It's still Arsenal nil, Villarreal nil. So Villarreal 2 1 up on aggregate at the Emirates. Uh, there's 15 minutes remaining in that one. And it's now 2 all between Roma and Manchester United on the night. Uh, Edinson Cavani scored both the goals for United, who were 1 0 up, went 2 1 down, and now back level at 2 all. So that makes it 8 four on aggregate to Manchester United and uh, they're through to the final Arsenal need a goal at this Arsenal side Shane not very good at all it turns out <laughs> how did how did we not take something from them Nate? <laughs> <laughs> come on <laughs> they're not though are they like, it, does, it, 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 feel, it feels as though they've stalled they're, they're not Sorry. very it, it does feel as though they've stalled yeah 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 it does in fairness um, no look at it they never really got momentum for them did it um, and it's it's just you know with with no UEFA Cup if there's no Europa League final for them it's it's just been such a, a disappointing year really for them they've they've never they've never been remotely close to the Champions League positions really and you know for a guy who was working under Pep Guardiola and you were expecting such a strong identity you know you look at Arsenal and you, you just really don't know what you're going to see from them on on, a, on any given week now look when you're <laughs> when you're standing on the sideline and you're up close to them they look like absolute world beaters but uh, look at the level they're operating at they're, they're way off the mark aren't they at the moment yeah when you're on that sideline and probably the most beautiful playing surface in the Premier League is it just that thing everybody says about the difference in quality it's just the speed of them everything's that little bit quicker yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 ping, ping, ping. You can't you can't get near them. You really, really can't. Every every touch is 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 perfect, and the crispness of everything that they're doing. Now, to be fair, our our lads at the time equipped ourselves reasonably well mm. uh, against them, so they did. But um, no, nah, look, I mean, you're looking you're looking at players who are number you know 24, 25, 26 in an Arsenal panel, and uh, look, they'd certainly be in the top three or four players if they're in the League of Ireland that's for sure you know Ooh, inches away from going in front Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang a header from eight yards out did the right thing headed down into the ground comes off the left hand post almost goes in off the back of the keeper 
but Villarreal just about do enough uh, to survive. So Arsenal really pushing for a goal. Uh, Shane, now that uh, you're available again, we're going to be talking to you a lot more, I'm sure, over the coming weeks, and we'll get your opinion on everything uh, League of Ireland and grassroots, because we had a really good conversation uh, a few months back with Dr. Laura Finnegan as well uh, when we were doing our Future of Sports series, and we'd Michal Martin, the Taoiseach, on talking about uh, a lot of things around the future of sport that I know you're interested in all of them, not just League of Ireland, but also around PE and school. So we'll dedicate a bit of time to that over the coming uh, weeks and months. But you are back managing. You're, is it small ball? Is it medium-sized ball? What is it? Football hurling? <laughs> oh, we, we call it the small ball around here, all right, Nathan. Um, so you're managing Rat Downey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, uh, I've taken over our own senior hurlers for 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 this year with a with a, a few very close friends of mine, which is 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 great to have such a a tight knit management group. But now, look, I'd 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 always have had a a massive massive love and interest for for hurling, and um, it uh it just seemed like a a good year to have a crack at it. And there's kind of a real real buzz around the place. Obviously, we're allowed back into the field this coming week, so oh, yeah. we are. So uh, can't wait to get going. Are you the manager? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm gone in. There's, there's. I suppose we went in as, as joint. Ma- oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah, that yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. The there. joke, sorry. the joke went straight over there. Straight yeah, so over joint there. managers. <laughs> Jesus, getting confusing again. <laughs> joint managers. Just take the gig, all right, and pick the team. <laughs> take some responsibility. Come on. Hopefully, hopefully this one won't be quite as confusing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no doubt. Uh, Shane, great to talk to you as always. Listen, thanks for coming on. Thanks for being so honest, and uh, we'll chat to you over the next few weeks. Cheers, Ned.